Good afternoon and welcome back to the Regulatory Infra Management Focus Day. My name is Gary Wilson, Managing Director of Core IT, and I'm delighted to introduce to you over the next 90 minutes or so, three excellent speakers who will share with us their experiences in regulatory information management. Our first speaker is Niels Leander, and Niels is the Global Head of Regulatory Affairs at NNIT. In that position, he advises global pharmaceutical companies on business improvement and information management. Uh, he's also a member of the EMA Sport Task Force, and today he'll share with us how to utilize IDMP and data governance to improve business process. Niels, over to you. All right, well, thank you very much, Gary. Um, so today, as uh, Gary mentioned, we're gonna talk about uh, data governance and IDMP in relation to business processes, and you could say taking the next steps in terms of, of the maturity of the information management uh, era of, uh, of regulatory affairs. So, I would uh, like just to, to say a few words about the, the company I'm from in terms of uh, in an IT uh, that we uh, ad advise and implement and uh, support uh, on application services in the regulatory affairs uh, space. So of course, my presentation is also based on the experiences that we have from, from the various uh, projects in this, uh, in this space and, um, and taking the steps in terms of digital transformation for, for our, our clients why I believe IDMP is a, is a very, very important foundational aspect of the, the whole digital uh, transformation and, uh, and all the things that would need to be built on top of having a sound uh, data foundation. So I would like to start with uh, three statements um, just to spark the, the discussion here. Um, in terms of discussing IDMP, a lot of talk is around data quality, how you can look into the systems and, and improve the data quality and, and make it uh, compliant with, uh, with uh, IDMP. And so the first statement is really to emphasize uh, that data quality is not just a technical discipline. It requires organizations to work together uh, and it requires uh, competencies and uh, organizational changes in order to make that, uh, that happen. I'll come back to a few pointers also to why that is the, the case. The second one, um, just to poke a little fun of it, uh, is that IDP compliant, becoming IDP compliant is easy. And then the second part is the important, important one compared to maintaining IDP compliance, because there's no doubt that IDP, becoming IDP compliant is not easy in itself. Uh, but if you think of the, the years ahead after the go live of, of the EMS systems of maintaining uh, IDP compliance, that is uh, for sure uh, uh, an even larger undertaking in terms of uh, uh, work from uh, both the inner side and the and the industry side, and of course data quality and, and my topic of today data governance comes into uh, into play here in order to prepare for that. And then my third uh, statement also is re regarding data governance, is that I, I believe that implementing data governance is also the best way to make uh, management commit to data um, and to uh, precisely have the uh, the the, uh, the structures around the discussions on data and how it can be used and and maintained in the best uh, best possible way. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, any IDP project and the data governance project cannot be uh, be led uh, to a successful end unless management is uh, is is fully committed uh, to this. And, uh, and data governance is precisely one of the ways to uh, engage them in that. So let's have a look at, at data governance and uh, some of the drivers for it. Um, so in, I would say that there's five key elements in, in, in that. Um, it's, uh, gov data governance is needed when data is starting to be considered as a strategic asset. Um, that is for sure the, the case with regulatory affairs data in, the, in these years, that it's moving towards a much more strategic use. Um, Data governance is, is needed when, in the, whenever there's new data consumers, and that is for sure also the case in terms of, uh, of the regulators needing the information, but, but also think of the, the users uh, within the pharma company in terms of the use of, uh, of the data in the safety realm and, uh, and elsewhere in the, in the business areas. Um, data-centric regulations, that's for sure. IDMP is a data-centric regulation, so hence it's, it's also really a, a, an important uh, driver for, for starting thinking about data governance in regards to that. Volume and types of data, uh, the volume is of course going up with IDMP, 
and the third uh, uh, and fifth one is in terms of, of companies having a digital uh, often cloud journey uh, ahead of them that data governance is, is needed for uh, for that so all of these things uh, really lead to a, a strong uh, need for having a look at the at the data governance uh, typically uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies and, and and i would say in particular regulatory affairs uh, companies uh, have not had a high level of maturity in the, in the data governance for so for a lot of companies it's a it's a new thing to uh, to endeavor into and to uh, to to implement in the in the organization so it's it's important to to use some of the the best practices that that uh, uh, that have been developed, for instance, from from other industries and from other business areas, in order to to get the data governance right for for regulatory affairs in regard to uh, IDMP and and beyond. So, if you look at your company and uh, and say, um, do we need data governance? Uh, I would point to five things where you could say that these are these are signs that you that you need data governance. Um, you you're probably in a situation where a lot of your specialists spend more time on actual data search than doing the analysis with that data. So in, in, in lots of, of companies, uh, the split is actually that 80% is used just for searching for the data, whereas 20% 20, 20 is doing is done on the on the actual analysis. And you, you of course want to turn that around in order to get the, the insights that you that you need and use your specialist in the best possible way. Um, if you're in a situation that data assets have no semantic meaning assigned, then it's also a good sign that you would need to go for uh, a more structured data governance setup. Uh, you need uh, shared definitions across the, the, the organization in order to do that. Lack of confidence in data uh, due to, for instance, uh, low data quality and traceability. And that is the case for a lot of uh, companies that uh, that employees uh, may have this lack of confidence, and uh, and, um, and 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 data governance is one way of lifting uh, lifting that. Sometimes the roles of uh, of who's managing the data, who's responsible, and so on. If you have those kinds of discussions in your company, then it's also a clear sign that data governance is something that is uh, needed. Um, and if there is no single platform for your data discovery. Um, um, Typically, you would have uh, different systems that you would need to manage and use data from. And if that's the case, then data governance also what can tie those uh, uh, data together from a uh, from an organizational perspective. And, um, and 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 that's also another reason for looking into this. So the benefits uh, of doing it uh, is really that you you want to reduce the manual uh, work uh, in particular when when it comes to uh, life cycle management of the, of the products uh, there's a lot of manual work uh, embedded in that and uh, if you have clear responsibilities uh, of who's managing the data uh, it's also a, a, a better way to uh, reduce the the, the 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 manual workload for for the employees but also to activate automation in the in the area um, the data sharing within RA uh, it can be improved uh, uh, dramatically also by having uh, a very strong data governance and certainly also the data sharing uh, outside uh, outside RA. So uh, I mentioned safety and uh, manufacturing area is also another another important point in terms of of sharing some of the the key information, for instance, for for serialization. Um, the compliance with health authorities that goes without saying when we in the IDP realm that uh, that uh, that is a, a, a big business benefit of, of this um, and then building trust generally uh, for for data is a, is a key aspect um, that can uh, really lift the the organization to to work uh, in, a, in in more efficient ways with uh, with data so let's take a step back in terms of having a, a, a look at the IDMP target operating uh, model that also has been uh, presented at, at this conference. Uh, and uh, you're uh, probably familiar with at this point in terms of the differences from the XEVMPD submission. Uh, when we have the, the value chain from coming from product development to the application to the approval, um, the, the process is going to change and the way that that uh, the IDMP submission is going to be built up is uh, is much earlier 
and you would need to have your submission teams involved in the actual um, uh, getting the data together uh, where CXCV and PD is after the approval so you can uh, do it after everything has been been settled you can ask your XCVB team to to submit the information so it's going to be uh, much more embedded into the submission processes and um, and I would recommend having an overall look to uh, to the impact of the of the processes across the, uh, the the submission teams and how data can be uh, accumulated uh, for for the submission. So it's a uh, it's a larger data set as you also familiar with, um, and that in itself is also going to change the, the the processes and and the the workload in, involved in this, and um, and also companies are starting to look into the principle of of actually reversing the uh, the the order of things in terms of if you actually can collect data very quickly um, and in the process you can also start informing your documents by that data rather than having written all the documents and then extract the data that you would need for your IDMP submission. It's not an easy task you need to find the right timing um, but data governance is also something that can help you on that uh, that journey in order to move much more towards uh, data being the, the source of things and documents being written off the data that uh, is being uh, being generated. Um, so if we also in relation to the IDMP target, uh, target operating model and look uh, very closely also at, at regulatory affairs, um, uh, according to surveys, um, actually uh, about one third only in the industry have confidence in their data. That's a very low number, uh, also compared to to other industries. Um, and um, and of course, data quality uh, assessments, data quality uh, monitoring is something that would be needed in order uh, to to lift that confidence. And uh, and of course, lots of technical tools can help you uh, with that uh, uh, of lifting uh, data quality, but. It, as I started out saying, it's also an organizational thing. It's also a question of, of, of having the right governance in order to not just fix data quality uh, one time, but to have a continuous way of looking at uh, data quality and in maintaining the, uh, the quality over time. Um, another statistic says that uh, lots of uh, companies have started um, an adaptation of RIM systems and, uh, and uh, some of the some of the companies are, are well underway um, and of course that is a, an important um, aspect in terms of having um, um, having a, a, a IDMP compliance because typically RIM systems are also used for being the, the, the platform for, for doing uh, the uh, IDMP submission and so an important aspect in, in, in bridging uh, towards that. Um, but then in terms of data governance, it's a question of also reaching outside the RIM implementation and actually looking at uh, data coming from the various sources that would, need it, uh, that would be needed in order to do the uh, entire IDMP submission. Um, we can also see in some of our uh, surveys that, uh, that a lot of pharmaceutical companies are looking to implement Data Hub in, re in regard to uh, an IDMP solution or RIM solution that can submit IDMP uh, information. And, um, and of course, the, the view to Data Hub is, uh, is also comes uh, very close uh, in connection with, uh, with data governance. Typically, a, a data hub, in, in addition to uh, a RIM solution, is precisely done in order to work on those uh, use cases uh, of both IDMP compliance, but also certainly uh, using the, the RA data uh, beyond uh, IDMP for other uh, use cases in, in, uh, in, within RA or in the, in the touch points between RA and, and other business areas. So, one of the reasons why uh, this is statistics is important is that the, the importance of the data hub also uh, further uh, accentuates the need for having a look to the data governance of all the data that is uh, is flowing into the, the data hub that would be needed and having a close look to where that data is going to be uh, be consumed in order to to have the right levels of uh, definition of data and the right level of, of management of the data. 
So if we look overall uh, at the RA process um, from start to end, uh, we have um, in a schematic way here, you could say we have the process uh, lined out here. And as mentioned before, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the processes that are needed uh, in order to submit to, to IDMP, when we actually dive into uh, each of these uh, areas, uh, we can see an impact from uh, the IDMP uh, submission in, in, lots of, uh, in lots of boxes uh, along the, the RA uh, value chain. Uh, so it's important to have a look to those uh, those processes and and have a look at when data is generated in order to activate it uh, at the at the right time. So um, when we talk about data governance, uh, it's uh, an important aspect of data management uh, overall, and data management uh, is a core discipline for for IDMP. It's really about the the creation of the data, when it, where is it created, uh, where is it, uh, uh, where is it uh, processed, and how does it pass through to the data data consumption? So there's a lot of disciplines uh, involved in that, uh, and both uh, both technical and uh, and organizational. And data governance is precisely what can pull those things together in terms of saying who is doing what and and at what time, and how can uh, the overall um, um, how can the overall flow be uh, be assured, and how can the, uh, the how can management also support these uh, these aspects? So, in terms of looking at data governance, uh, what I would recommend is to have a, a systematic view to it and and see what is the the, the vision that you want to achieve with the with data governance overall. Um, is it IDMP? Is it IDMP and beyond, uh, with uh, with additional uh, use cases that you may have in in RA? Um, it requires having a look at the at the stakeholders and and also assessing the, the the current maturity level in 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 the company in the various teams of uh, of data governance in order to see where can we in the best possible way uh, lift the maturity to the level that that our vision sets out. And then create the the roadmap on how to improve the data governance and what would be needed, for instance, to uh, to be able to uh, to be ready for IDMP in the first step, and then perhaps subsequently PQCMC or other initiatives, and um, and the the other internal initiatives that you may have in the in the company. You need to have business cases for that, of course, in in terms of presenting that to to management. So that's also uh, one thing to to keep in mind here. And then um, in the framework, also uh, a view to the data policies that uh, that would be needed in in order to uh, to support the area and the overall data management uh, processes. Um, and the connections to the data quality is uh, to the data quality track is important um, because, uh, as I said, uh, data quality is not something that just needs to be fixed one time. It's something that needs to go into a continuous way of monitoring data, managing data. With loopbacks to uh, to data stewards who can who can uh, uh, rectify the data uh, at the source uh, in order to uh, to secure the the quality of the data as it gets uh, gets submitted to the authorities. So a couple of practical elements in order to to get started. Um, it's important to separate out um, uh, the strategic and tactical and operational levels of, of data governance. Uh, uh, in order to have uh, management support from a strategic point of view, uh, but also to have uh, have uh, tactical um, employees who can who can go in and uh, and, and direct the data management uh, aspects, um, and uh, and from an operational point of view, having uh, having data stewards that uh, that can can do the the daily operation of the of the data. So identify those uh, various stakeholder groups and get started really by appointing a data governance. Um, Leader um, and setting up uh, a committee in order to get the uh, the, the commitment from uh, from management, and then to start doing the work for your use cases in terms of the data generation and, and consumers, and then assign responsibilities and 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 assign a data stewards. Mm -hmm. And so, just to just to round off uh, in terms of three ways that then data governance is needed for, for getting IDMP right. Uh, I started out saying the data quality is an organizational matter. 
uh, it's not something that can be solved uh, by technology in itself in terms of, of uh, grim solutions or or, uh, or or the platforms that you uh, intend to use you need to have the organization in place uh, in order to to do this endeavor the second thing being that the maintaining compliance uh, is going to be a, a massive undertaking uh, as well so you need to have a, a, a you need to think in already now how is it going to be that you can have a continuous view on data quality and not just you could say migrate the data to a new platform and look at quality quality in, in regard uh, to that migration and then uh, leave it at that you need to be in a continuous way of working with your with your data and your data quality and and as i said uh, data governance is, is a very strong way to make management commit to data um, uh, they, any data initiative will fail if it doesn't get the uh, the governance structures and it doesn't get the, the management support that's a, that's a given so um, i would uh, end my talk here by just uh, letting you know in terms of uh, in, in it helping you with uh, with idmp uh, we've uh, helped a number of clients already um, starting with awareness uh, sessions and that could also be awareness sessions around the importance of data data governance um, then starting to do the analysis and finally the implementation of the of the systems that would be needed in regard to that and in in nit's room also you have uh, access also to the the brochure that we have on, on idmp and how to uh, get into idmp compliance and the services that uh, that we offer in regard to that and Again, I would emphasize it's both technical and, and organizational, so uh, so you can have a look in, in that brochure uh, for, for more inspiration. So over to you, um, uh, Gary. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening to, to the talk. We'll see if there's any questions. Yeah, thanks, Neil. It's a very interesting slide deck indeed. Um, first question in is, uh, with data governance, is it something that you recommend should be supported by tools and technologies? Um, will that help companies enable and move forward their data governance practices internally from a technology point of view? Yeah, that's yeah, it's it's a good question because you could say that data governance could, in principle, be uh, be supported by you could say handheld processes. I mean, you could you could implement data governance processes and uh, and and manage that by having uh, committees and having uh, you know spreadsheets to 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 to, uh, to have a look at the. The data that would need to to be uh, be amended and and so on, but at some point uh, it gets too complicated to to do it from uh, you could say in a handheld way. So there are tools to support in terms of of, uh, of data governance, of making sure that there's a there's the right flow for uh, for instance uh, that an RA manager is looking into the IDMP submission and uh, finding a, a an error there, um, having a tool then to to feedback into the the people who who generated the uh, who created the data and and to to let them know that there's something wrong with the data so it can be corrected at the source and and that, i think that is a, a key aspect mm -hmm. that you need to have that uh, in in place uh, because if you just and if you just correct it uh, before you know right before submitting to EMA, you know of course things will be wrong in your in your systems and then you have the the difficulty coming up uh, next time uh, so it's not really fixed uh, for, for good. So you need to go back. And there are tools um, that are very mature in terms of uh, in terms of data governance um, that can that can help setting that up and and, and let notifications flow uh, in in the company in order to uh, to do that. Okay, great. We have a couple more questions in in relation to management buy-in. And I think as you mentioned in your slides, if only a 30% or so of industry have confidence in their data, then this new role of data steward and data governance we can see is very important. So how would you recommend companies that maybe don't practice this today can establish a data governance framework and key points for management buy-in? And also which functional group within the organization uh, should, should the governance leader come from? Yeah, it, yeah, that's also a very good question in 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 terms of getting getting that buy-in. You know, it's 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 important to also to find the um, to find a, a a good way into it in terms of having. Um, you know, I would also recommend having uh, working with a you could say minimal viable product that actually can 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 grow and have the success. Uh, 
and and rather than having a, a big bang, uh, you know, focus on the things that you need uh, to have, have fixed. And IDP is such a good use case for that because it's compliance given. Um, but there's definitely some uh, alignment that needs to take place between your IT organization and and RA in terms of of uh, of, of saying who has the the responsibility for uh, for for the data governance in in regard to that, and how you can you can get RA, which is not a IT technical uh, area, uh, how you can get that organization to to understand the importance of it and how it can improve the the, the processes overall. So it's likely that you would need some awareness sessions, you could say, with management of, of getting the, the buy-in for that and then show by example uh, that this can be a success and then build it from there. Um, so, so I would recommend not implementing data governance overall for the for the whole business area. Stepwise approach. Zoom in on IDMP and then having a stepwise approach, yes. Yeah, perfect. Thanks very much, Nils. Um, it's a big topic and we could talk for ages, but uh, unfortunately we've run out of time. Um, so thanks very much for your slides today and uh, just a couple of minutes break and we'll be back with another speaker. Thank you. Thank you.